The main character in the movie is an explorer of some sorts and a master of disguise. He specializes in finding long lost artifacts and is a bad mother- Shut your mouth! I'm just talking about the main character. He's a real man and only fears one thing in life, and that's snakes. In the beginning of the movie, the explorer is kidnapped. He's taken to this guy's house and judging from his expensive art collection, you could tell he's got bread. The rich guy wants to hire the explorer to find an artifact that supposedly restores youth. Rumor has it, if a man drinks from this enchanted cup, that man will taste immortality. The silver chalices of Ponce de Leon. The chalice used by Christ during the Last Supper. The rich guy wants the explorer to guide his team on an adventure to find the artifact, but the problem is, the map is missing. Have you a map? I lost it. But as you pointed out, it's incomplete. The good news is the explorer finds the map later on in the movie. He discovers it's buried with a dead body and finds the room where the dead man's body is hidden. In the room, he opens up a box and finds some rocks. Rocks. The rocks lead him straight to the map that leads him straight to the cups the groups are searching for. There's three separate groups in the movie that are searching for the enchanted cups that restore youth. The first group is hired by the rich guy from reason number three. The second group consists of the main character and his team. And the third group is the religious radicals that protect the cup into falling into the hands of evil men. They believe only God should have the power to grant immortality. Only God can grant eternal life, not this pagan water. The messenger from God, the cup of life holds everlasting damnation. In order to find the artifact, each of the teams need the map and the book. If you do the math, there's three teams and only one book and one map. So it obviously turns into a death match really fast. One of the teams is after the main character. He's hard to find because when they call his name, it's confusing since two of the characters in the movie go by the same moniker. Dr. Jones. Yes. yes. Someone else named Jack Sparrow. A pretty lady joins the explorer on his quest and she's poisoned just like the BBD song. They fall deeply in lust with one another and they sort of got an Ike and Tina thing going on so it's a love-hate relationship. When both of them get chased by one of the groups looking for the cups, the explorer and his love interest are cornered and have nowhere to go. They manage to escape by diving into the dirty water and you're like ew because they kept talking and let all the dirty water get into their mouths and don't even spit it out. They survive and since she was cooperative during the escape, the explorer thinks he could trust her, but guess again. He later finds out she's working for the bad guy and she only cares about finding the cups. To avoid having the cups fall into the wrong hands, the main character gives the map to his close friend whom he trusts. All the friend has to do is not get captured. You wanna know what he does? Gets captured. The hero is reunited with his father in the film. His father warns him that the map and the book alone aren't enough to make it to the artifact. There's rituals that have to be followed to get there alive. You have to know how to pass the three tests. The fountain will test you. He who finds the grail must face the final challenge. One of the tests tests patience. The cave where the artifact is hidden has booby traps, and if you don't duck at the right moment, you're gonna die. Another test tests faith because there's a bottomless pit with no bridge, so you're literally going to have to take a leap of faith to get to the other side. And the last test is a spelling test. If you don't know how to read like really, really good, you're out of luck. Aqua de Vida. Jehovah begins with an I. J. The explorer sneaks behind enemy lines on a recon mission and has to be very, very quiet. Him and his partner almost escape unseen and unheard until the very last minute when the enemy is all like, freeze, put your hands up. Him and his buddy get taken prisoner and tied up with rope after that. The hero manages to get untied and he makes a run for it. If it were me, I would have ran home. But it's him and the first place he runs to is back to the girl that almost got him killed. They get to the temple and it gets real. The bad guys point their weapons at the explorer and have him test out the path first so none of the bad guys get killed by booby traps. Then he bow! Someone gets hit by a weapon in the torso and he's all like, ow. He's probably about to die, but the old man's child risks his or her life to save the dad. When they get in front of all the cups and immortality is at their fingertips, the villain gets super greedy and drinks from the wrong cup. Instead of turning younger, he turns older and it gets so bad that his flesh disappears and his skeleton turns to ash. After seeing that, the main character learns his lesson about the circle of life. He has a chance to be immortal, but changes his mind and wants to grow old the old fashioned way. Let it go. You could have lived. Maybe forever. Better to not know which moment may be your last. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>